culture. So no, I, I think just being able to sit back and take something at, uh, for what it is is important. I don't want the same thing over and over. I don't want no. a remake. I mean, just look at it as another run of an issue. Look at it as, you know, what, Mark Millar doing a a run. Yeah, and those originals will always be there. It's not to say that this this new shiny thing is, is somehow suddenly more important by proxy. Do you think that just a lot of comic book fans, they kind of grew up, were sort of introverted and got into this world? And they kind of grew to kind of to, to love this character? And so they've... Yeah. They They've become really... protective. They've become yeah. protective. That's a great point. And I think it's easy to label nerds especially as being toxic and, you know, so-and-so. But I think you're right. I think it comes from a place where they associate so strongly with something that either helped them through a tough time or something that they identify with. And once that identity is compromised in some way, um, especially vis-a-vis -vis a quote-unquote normal population, right, a new accessible audience is coming into this this circle of theirs that was once very exclusive, maybe it feels less special, maybe it is diluted. So, uh, yeah, I think it comes from an, an okay, a well-meaning place, but um, it can and does often turn um, toxic. Got it. I feel the same way. I just want to talk, because this movie just delves so differently from anything Batman had ever been. Yeah, and there is merit to the argument that it's not a very good Batman movie. Um, I'm, I think the movie has very... I think the movie has a lot of criticisms, and I think that one's a valid one, but I, I still love and adore it um, for many other reasons. Yeah, I hadn't watched this movie. I, I'm telling you, probably for 15 years, uh, but so I probably watched it I watched it last year. Mm -hmm. uh, I was very surprised how little Keaton was in it, and he cut a lot of his lines because he was supposed to make yeah. – he had monologues when he was in costume. And that would have been so wild to, to see. I can't even imagine it. I really can't. And uh, So – it's weird that he cut his lines, but I still think he's effective in this movie. And I like oh, his... everything. Every interview he's ever given on this, he, he – and, you know, you can call this lazy, but he's right. You, you're walking around – You're walk, even in this movie, you're walking around in a costume that looks like a bat. There, any more acting in this and you're overselling it. Like, you walk, that thing sells itself. <laughs> Yeah, that's, um, I love that scene where uh, in the beginning when he saves Selena Kyle from the right, taser, the clown, yeah. yeah, the taser clown by shooting the mm -hmm. thing behind his head and pulling it back and knocking him out, and then Selena talks to him. And he just looks at her, then he walks away. I guess that all that is all Batman. I mean, if you think about I Christian mean, Bale, people make fun of the way he talked when he was Batman. Yeah, don't get me started on that. I could <laughs> the less said about that, the better. But yeah, you know that that scene you mentioned, it's a very Sergio Leone bit right there's sort of this this face off and and any more words i mean what could he have possibly said to make it cooler yeah. really <laughs> um yeah no he's he's batman and, and that's it and he walks away and that's that um also keaton isn't cool he is not as a person but i think that's definitely changed like i think most people see him as a pop culture icon eh, for whatever different reasons you know he was a comedian first he did mr mom well, he's real juice real juice yeah so i think that's definitely changed but you're right back to the point where he was first cast in in the first 89 batman um there was a huge outcry just knowing that this might be a comedy movie that he wasn't right for this role why, so why, you're right why is I, mr mom in this movie Right. Well, they wanted Bill Murray before that even, um, wow. which is just wild. But yeah, you're right. I mean, he had a he had a rep for not being like cool, but I would argue otherwise now. I think at least for the past um, few years, especially his stock has has risen considerably. So he, he just has that very neurotic vibe, even when you know most if you think other guys or multiplicity or even Birdman, he has his wire. Mm. He has a wiry. Yep. So I guess I guess what I'm thinking is he has this very wiry kind of kinetic energy which wouldn't translate well in Batman, so maybe he felt more comfortable being silent when he was right, Batman. Right, and I think we're, yeah, no, I, I think that's fair, and I think we're also talking about two different types of cool. There's the sort of suave, calm, confident, and then there's the, wow, this guy's fucking crazy and unhinged type of cool, and I think uh, he sort of taps into the latter a little bit more. But, um, yeah, it, 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 I'm just, I'm, I'm blessed for that, that casting. I just think that... Um, Burden always talked about the selection process for that, and he always talked about having seen more rugged, traditional, conventional um, actors for that. And he always talked about how Keaton's eyes really sold it. So all of my favorite heroes, 
I mean, I love Indiana Jones. I like Jack Burton. I like Sean William Scott from Goon. I know he's that's a hockey movie, <laughs> but I just I like action heroes who aren't the big swaggering. Uh, you know, I never got into the Stallone or Schwarzenegger. Those big, sure. like I, I'm not like that, or the the like now what the Rock is becoming, uh, what right. uh, Statham's becoming. Those have never been my favorite kind of action stars. I you know back in the day, JCVD, I know mm-hmm. that he beat up everybody, but he would get beat up in his movies and he would act vulnerable. So I think that added to the fight scenes because you're like, man, he's losing. You watch him now and you're like, the people he's fighting have terrible game plans. But for some reason, <laughs> when I was younger, I love Jack Burton being out of his league. I like that Michael Keaton is Batman. I love that. And he's idea. not very tall either. He's like five yeah. ten. So I, just, I don't know. I guess that's why I, I like, I, he's, he's always been my favorite Batman just because of that fact. I, I mean, the other ones were fine. I never took Clooney seriously, Well, he didn't have a chance. I no, guess, that, but, he was sort of robbed of material, but you're right. I mean, I'm looking right now at my sort of hot toys, um, one six scale Batman and Batman returns figures. And, you know, just in terms of the costume alone, like, I, I don't I don't think there's a better costume on film. It's so impractical, but it's just the coolest. It's just like a fucking Lamborghini. Yeah, um, he, he had I, to learn how to like punch with his torso. Like he couldn't move a lot with his shoulders and neck, so he had to like right, punch from the they torso. They call that the classic uh, the Batman look, uh, where you turn <laughs> using your shoulders. And you know what's interesting? Someone I, I don't know. I, I guess we're, we'll we'll keep moving along, but uh, I'm kind of jumping ahead here to Catwoman. So you mm-hmm. have Batman who always has this pristine costume and. Catwoman's costume slowly begins falling apart. To unravel, yeah. And so does her mental state, which is another Mm -hmm. very – it's not a metaphor. Classic film techniques, yeah. yeah, uh, I mean, I guess it is a metaphor, but it's very – it's not hidden. Uh, It's it's not Malachian. But I like that aspect of her. I know know it just went from Batman's costume to her costume, but I love how – No, that's totally appropriate. It just became more disheveled as she went Mm -hmm. along, and so did her mental state. Uh, yeah. Because unlike Batman, you know, you know, they both became something kind of different. She adopted the cat. He adopted the bat. He had the money. He had the power. He had Alfred. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, he had a guide. He had that. Uh, so when she took uh, donned hers, I think she really – like it just was different circumstances from when they first put on those masks. And it led to something completely different because they had different support systems and – I don't know, yeah. I thought that was interesting. No, you're right. And and we we are lucky to see that. And I also you know mentioned earlier with the music and such with her unraveling sequence, but it is a highlight. And yeah, you know, you often get the complaint about those movies that you don't see that uh for Bruce Wayne's character and you don't see that really until Batman begins, which I I think Keaton actually and Burton wanted to sort of explore in, in Batman Forever before they sort of were jettisoned from the project. But I don't know. You know, deep down, if I'm being honest with myself, I don't know if I want to see Keaton go through that. I, I just I feel like there's so much also gained, especially for as a comic book fan, from just seeing him in what his maybe first year starting out um, in that '89 Batman. I like that he's sort of established. I, I I like that we're cutting to the chase, so to speak, because you know certainly Batman Begins being its own great story and all that. I just don't. I don't know. I don't know if that fits aesthetically. I don't know if it fits with the Burton thing. So I don't know. I could be completely wrong, but I, I do appreciate that we do see the transformation for Selena Kyle Catwoman um, in a way that we maybe we, we obviously didn't for, for the Bruce Wayne character. I don't want that. I love how he became a fully fleshed character. And I love how in Batman Returns, it's too late for him to be kind of going back to normal because mm-hmm. he just waits yeah. around being called to hurt people. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I appreciate the brooding, constant, constant brooding. I don't know. I, I kind of dig that about him. Uh, do so before we move on to our favorite uh, superhero films. Any last thoughts about this movie? Yeah, I mean, it's, I feel like every time I'm on this pod, I talk about movies that I'm just obsessed with, which is probably why I'm on here. But you know, this was a movie I saw it when I was five years old and running around in Batman costume every other day. So it's important to me, and I think when people talk about it being fans, they're talking about it through the lens of nostalgia, which, you know, right or wrong is very different than the fans that might talk about the dark Knight or whatever recent uh, Nolan movies. Um, and I'm certainly a fan of those too, but I think when we talk about being fans or liking Batman returns, it, it, it's for very different reasons. Um, and I guess 
you know, for people who say it's not a very good Batman movie, there's merit there, but I do think it does not get enough credit um, for doing all the things it did differently and going so against type, whether that was casting or merely challenging the conventions of a superhero movie, which admittedly wasn't so firmly in place yet. Right? We didn't have the Marvel formula and they weren't a dime a dozen um, yet. But um, yeah, I do, I do think this is a movie that sort of transcends the genre in, you know, for better and worse. And for me, I think that just makes it all the more special. And so th when we go over our, our five, I guess I, I'm not, I won't break up the discussion, but I have this at number three of my, uh, my okay. favorite. No, not best, favorite. But right. I have this at three mm -hmm. because Burton wanted to do something different. I think so many of these super, superhero movies that are out today, while they're good, while you know they have 90% Rotten Tomato scores, I get it. 90% of people could easily like these movies. I don't think there's any – there's no stakes to them. I don't feel right, anything. Right. I think Marvel's incredibly smart. People are going to be screaming at this thing. But I don't, I don't consider any of them great films. Mm. Uh, I know that people are going to be angry at me about Dark Knight. and I, I do think they're good, but I don't know. I just – I, there's so many that come out right now. I like them. I'll buy them. I worked on some of them. So I really think they're good movies. I think they're done really well. I think the cast they have are per are perfect. But what I love about Batman Returns is how just different it is. It's mm -hmm. grotesque. It's German expressionistic uh, style. Toss in some very cyn cyn cynical Christmas themes. You have Christopher Walken saying bobble. You have... Danny DeVito going all in on the grossest character ever. Michelle mm. Pfeiffer, it just so she's she, you know she's in this incredibly tight outfit, but you you also really like the character. It's not just like a you know they're not just like shoving her in something like this goes right. With the she's character. not you like feel it. she's not there. She's not there just for eye candy. Yeah, and just the the char as she like falls apart. You have the the very you know obvious metaphors between Penguin and Batman. You have Batman brooding. You just have. The overall There's weirdness depth there that I think, yeah, people don't give it credit for, I think. And I was talking to Megan. We were, we were going on our nice nightly walk, uh, my wife, mm -hmm. and she's on the podcast. She's still listening to it. Our Bad, our, uh, Bad Times at El Royale podcast and Apostle. Mm -hmm. It's very good, very very well researched. So listen to that. But uh, so I was talking to her, and I was like, I watch so many movies. That I think the movies that I love the most are the ones I actually remember. And I yep. know that's really bad. But a, no, lot of, a, lot, a lot of these movies I watch, I just forget about immediately. Uh, and, but, but Batman Returns has always been just, just whether he's you know it's he's biting noses or there's really nothing like it. Yeah, it, there it is. There's nothing like it. They tried something different, and I know they had to do a Batman reset. But I love this movie. I think it it's very well performed. The actors are all in. It's it's beautifully constructed. The sets are great. So that's that's kind of my take on this film and even if it is a da different batman movie mm -hmm. so who cares like this there's so many different variations of batman like go back to your old bat that batman that you love is still there mm -hmm. so that's why um yeah that's what i gotta say about this movie you want to jump into the list before we get we, we used to get too uh uh philosophical here sure yeah i don't know if i have it ordered like you do but i certainly have a list to rattle off all right let's start five what do you got at five Five? Oh my gosh, Mark. I don't even know if I can do five. So, all right. I'll just, I'll start with this. Uh, <laughs> I love the, the first two Spider-Man movies and Homecoming. I love uh, Batman 89 and Returns, obviously, and The Dark Knight. Um, and all, you know, just some like occasional new modern ones that I like. Logan was like transformative for the genre for good reasons. Um but man, when it comes to like favorite ones, I don't even know if this is an accurate list on my part, but I would I would name drop something like The Phantom at five. Billy Zane? With Billy Zane, yes. Nice. It's just like such a fun spirited serial uh brought to life, and I just never thought it got enough credit. Like it's silly, it's fun, but it just feels it's just a joy to watch, really. I love yarns. I just dropped na uh, National Treasure. I love the 2018 Tomb Raider because it's just a yarn with Walton Goggins. She goes to an island and looks for treasure. Right. And there's any movie where you got to walk on floors that are falling underneath you. 
or yeah. there's just caves. I'm all, I'm all in for. So yeah. I, I have very fun. I, 